her speech is unusually free. A lot of the countries in today's world um, do not have really strong laws for the media anymore. But uh, a few countries, like for instance Belgium, also the United States with the First Amendment, and especially, for example, Sweden, uh, have very strong laws protecting the media and the work of investigative or general journalists. So from our perspective, this is something, if, there's any, if there are any Swedes here, um, you have to make sure that your country is really one of the, the, the strongholds of freedom of information. You have Sweden to sure has a enviable, although far from perfect, a record in protecting publications. It has a practical record within the past few years of uh, protecting internet publications against censorship. And it's precisely Sweden's unique freedom of speech law that prompts WikiLeaks to locate their main site in this unpretentious basement in one of Stockholm's inner suburbs. Det började med en tunneltjänst att de skulle tunna trafik här igenom för att kunna kringgå vissa IP-bandningar och sånt som har skett i andra länder där som inte gillar Wikileaks. Men senare så valde de att ställa även en maskin här där de publicerar material utifrån. PRQ offer their customers total secrecy. Their systems prevent anyone from eavesdropping either Wikileaks chat pages or finding out who sent what to who. Vi erbjuder dels anonymitetstjänster, så kallade VPN-tunnlar, där en, en klient från utsidan ansluter till våra maskiner som sedan laddar ner den informationen de vill ha. Så om någon försöker spåra dem ifrån slutstationen, så att säga, där informationen kommer ifrån, så kommer de bara komma till våra maskiner. Och härifrån så lämnar inte vi ut några uppgifter om vem som hade det IP-numret vid det här tillfället. PRQ har en track record av att uh, the hardest uh, ISP you can find in the world. There's just no one else that bothers less about lawyers harassing them about content they are hosting. And it's just the attitude that, let's say, works very well with what Wikileaks was uh, set out to do. Här är uh, uh, vår server hall. One reason why Wikileaks need PRQ is that their operations are protected by Sweden's strict freedom of expression laws, laws which PRQ exploit to the full. We accept everything, everything that falls under, that is legal in a Swedish law. So we accept precisely everything, regardless of how immoral or unethical it can be. Over it, so we don't want to make any moral judgments. There is an information bomb that is waiting for them. Vi ställer för de konventionella vapen. Och förhoppningsvis då kan den här informationen på något sätt stoppa några av de konventionella vapen. Det är min förhoppning. And we aren't talking about any old information. It's from these servers at PRQ that WikiLeaks has, for example, made public a manual from the United States Guantanamo Bay Detention Center. A military manual leaked on the internet is revealing details of the way terrorist suspects are being treated at the U.S. naval base at Guantanamo Bay in Cuba. It tells of the use of solitary confinement and humiliation to break down the detainees mentally. Human rights groups have for years been asking the U.S. administration for access to this manual. If you censor important material of this type, we're not just going to criticize you. We're going to take the material that you tried to censor and we're going to spray it all over the world and we're going to stick it in our archives in a way that's never going to disappear. Encourage everyone to get copies of it. WikiLeaks' battle against censorship knows no geographical frontiers. The next step is to publish an internal report commissioned by the multinational trading company Trafigura who are alleged to have dumped toxic waste in the Ivory Coast that caused tens of thousands of people to seek medical care. The Guardian newspaper was going to produce a big story on this. And as a result, they were gagged. The company obtained a secret order in court to gag all the press in the UK from reporting anything related to the content of that report and the fact they had been gagged. In the US, hackers discover that the Republican presidential candidate Sarah Palin is apparently bypassing US transparency laws by using a private email account to conduct government business. 
WikiLeaks publishes her messages. After just two years, the sites made public over a million secret documents. But WikiLeaks, as an organization, continues to be largely shrouded in secrecy. Only Julian Assange and Daniel domscheit berry appear in public, the latter under the pseudonym Schmidt. Okay, hello everybody. My name is Daniel Schmidt. This is Julian Assange. Um, we're here to make a short presentation about the WikiLeaks project. According to the National, which is something that we are kind of proud, um, it's one of the last quotes we had. So the National has said that we have produced more scoops in our short existence than the Washington Post in the last 30 years. Um, Their publication activities soon lead to counterattacks. When WikiLeaks release lists of censored websites, internet service providers in a number of countries, including Thailand, China and Iran, shut them down. The more sensitive the material they publish, the more often WikiLeaks become the object of lawsuits and threats. WikiLeaks now attracts the attention of the US intelligence, who, in a classified report, claim that the site is a threat to national security and suggest ways of shutting it down. Priority is put on finding the individuals leaking the information. The US intelligence, however, only managed to keep the report secret a short while before it's leaked to WikiLeaks. It now becomes obvious that WikiLeaks need to find more and safer havens from which they can publish their information. A sequence of events now starts on an island in the middle of the North Atlantic, which, while it leads to more censorship efforts, will also create new opportunities for WikiLeaks. October came, October 2008, and the Icelandic banking system imploded. It lost 17 eighteenths of its mass over the course of about a week or two. It was essentially one bank per week went bankrupt. WikiLeaks obtain material that show how Iceland's catastrophic bank collapses were partly due to cronyism or favoritism, carelessness and secretiveness. When this highly detailed document is put out on the net, the bank launches a counterattack. Well, the first time I heard of WikiLeaks was, uh, was in the beginning of August 2009. I was working as a reporter for the state television uh, when uh, I got a tip that uh, this uh, uh, website had an important document uh, just posted online. The uh, document was the uh, high exposure uh, loan book for the failed Kaupthien Bank. It was essentially all of the regulators had been, had been derelict in their duties. All of the bankers had been lying about the actual state of affairs. The bank's management react in panic to the revelations and in a desperate move force the Icelandic judiciary to resort to extreme measures. I was the first one actually to, uh, to break that story. But the bank reacted uh, in a manner that was uh, quite interesting. Gotland nú hefjast frétti flöðardaginn fyrst ágúst, samt ekki allar þær frétti sem allir maður segja ykkur. They got a gag order on the state television, actually the first and only one in the history of the Icelandic state television news department. Allir geta nálgast þau á vefsíðinni wikileaks.org, wikileaks.org. The leak lays bare the disastrous effects of the cronyism inherent in Iceland. We had failed as a country because we had not been sharing the information that we needed. We were in the middle of an information famine. That sort of eventually led to this just, let's get the WikiLeaks people here and then when they were here we just went, hmm, okay, uh, is there anything you want us to do? And obviously there was.